following two emails is from two doctors, Dr. Delano Smasker and Dr. Django Bridge. Subject D-173-2263-2264 and 2267 incident footage. Here's the footage you requested, two versions of each sent. First versions were edited for brevity, second versions are complete recordings. I look forward to reviewing your findings. Good luck. Dr. Bridge, Site-66, Clearance 4 Archivist. Since I am not affiliated with the SCP-173 project, I do not have access to these video files, however we will go to the next email on the list. 2. Dr. Django Bridge from Dr. Delano Smasher Subject, Conclusions, Reply, D-173-2263-2264-2267 Incident as you know, my reasons for requesting this footage were the strange findings on my autopsies of subjects 173-2263, and 2267. After reviewing the footage provided, I am now confident enough of my suspicions to elaborate on them further. During my autopsies, I found no evidence of external physical trauma to the aforementioned subjects' necks or craniums, as one would expect to find in instances of strangulation or vertebral torsion. This was not unexpected. I've long felt it asinine to assume that an entity with no digits or prehensile appendages could physically manipulate individuals in such a manner. My review of provided footage, in addition to confirming an average speed of 20 to 22 meters per second while unobserved, also strongly suggests that SCP-173 does not make physical contact with its victims. My frame-by-frame -frame review finds that at frame 235-938 of Camera 2's edited log, SCP-173 closes to within 10 cm of D-173-2267. D-173-2267's eyes remain fully closed, SCP-173's arms remain fixed in their usual at-rest positions. At frame 235-939, less than 0.00001 seconds later, subject D-173-2267's head is turned upward such that it stares directly into SCP-173's eyes, and Dash 2267's eyes are now fully open. D-173-2267 collapses shortly thereafter. Death appears to be due to, at least in this instance, a combination of trauma caused by the rapidity of motion SCP-173 afflicts and the severing of the spinal cord due to separation between the second and third cervical vertebrae, and not physical torsion or strangulation, a conclusion supported by my autopsy findings. This also potentially explains the strange bruising and hemorrhaging present in the soft tissues of SCP-173's victims around the eyes, a transient, violent, nonspecific, nonphysical force ripping its victims' eyelids open. I have furthermore found that the positioning of its victims' bodies may be significant. D-173-2267's body collapses such that its head faces D-173-2263 and D-173-2264. The bodies of the latter two individuals may be seen collapsing in similar fashion at frames 333-777 and 940-052 respectively. All face towards the northern side of SCP-173's containment cell, allowing what would be a clear view of SCP-173 in its preferred position resting against the western wall of the northwestern corner of its cell. Additionally, I can confirm beyond reasonable doubt that the rumored dead man stare exhibited by victims of SCP-173, so called because the eyes of ostensibly dead victims continue to track SCP-173's movement post-mortem, are not a product of nerves or general paranoia, but a genuine phenomenon, as may be seen by magnification and slow motion review of D-173-2267's eyes following his expiration and demonstrated by Dash-2263 and Dash-2264 as well. My complete findings, appended video logs, autopsy footage, and autopsy reports are attached to this message for review, distribution, and archival. Thank you for your swift response. Dr. Smasher, Area 14, Clearance 4, Unit Director.